Hello my quilting friends, Leah Day here with a new block for the machine quilting block party. Today we're learning how to piece block number seven, a cabin fever block that incorporates a log cabin block in the center, has square triangles, and flying geese. So let's get started learning how to piece all of these awesome units together. So let's get started first with our log cabin block. This is super easy piecing. We're gonna begin with a fabric A square in the center and two shorter fabric B rectangles. I'm gonna flip these over so they're right sides together. We're gonna to take it to the machine and just stitch right along these sides to start the piecing. So I've aligned the edges of these pieces really nicely. I'm gonna slip it under my foot and stitch on down. And I have lowered my stitch length to 1.4 millimeters, so I'm producing a really nice tight stitch so I can press my seam allowances open. So the first step of pressing seam allowances open is to give it a good finger press. Open up that seam with your fingers and then press with a hot, dry iron. Okay, and so now the next step of our log cabin is to layer up the next set of pieces. We have some more fabric B rectangles, and we're going to piece these the exact same way to both sides of that center unit. So I've pieced those two rectangles in place, and again, I'm gonna finger press that seam allowance open and give the whole block a nice press with my iron. And then now it's time to attach the second set of strips. It kind of makes rings. So we're going to layer some fabric A rectangles to both sides and the longer fabric A rectangles to the top and bottom. And we're gonna piece this the exact same way. We're gonna touch the side rectangles first, then the top and bottom, piecing with an accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance. And here's what your log cabin block will look like when it's finished. Make sure to take your ruler and place it over the block and make sure that it comes out the exact right size. If it ends up a little bit big, trim it down so it's exactly the right size before we move to the next step. So the next thing we're gonna piece are some half square triangles and flying geese. And to prep these up, you're gonna to need to draw a diagonal line on all of the squares involved. So I've got some fabric B squares here and I'm just drawing a diagonal line from corner to corner. And for this fabric, I can see my ceramic marking pencil. I can see that mark. For the lighter yellow squares, this is fabric C, I'm going to use a really, just a regular lead pencil and I'm gonna mark really lightly across that diagonal. And it's gonna be enough for me to see, but not enough to really show in the quilt. So I'm gonna prep all of these up and then we'll be ready to make half square triangles and flying geese for this block. Let's piece our half square triangles first. I've layered a fabric B with a fabric D and I've aligned these edges really nicely. And now I'm going to stitch a quarter, quarter of an inch away from that center marked line. And I'm just tweaking it, making sure that everything's lined up all the way down the line. And just stitch all the way down. Once you stitch one side of the half square triangle, you're gonna rotate it around, line up your patchwork foot with that marked line again, and piece a quarter inch away from the opposite side. And just work to keep that line nicely aligned with the edge of your patchwork foot all the way down. So the next step to half square triangles is to trim them apart. You just cut right along that center marked line and then carefully open them up, open up that seam allowance and finger press it open. Now this seam is on the bias, so be really gentle as you finger press that open and then give it a good press with your iron. So you're gonna end up with four half square triangles. Make sure to refer to your pattern to know what size to trim these triangles down to so it'll work for our block. So the last unit we need to make for our block are the flying geese. We're gonna take our fabric D rectangle and layer on top our prepared fabric C squares and we've marked a diagonal line across these as well. But this time we're gonna stitch right on the line from corner to corner. So here's what it's gonna look like once we've stitched corner to corner. And now I'm gonna take this and fold over the top fabric 
Again, this is on the bias, so be really gentle. So you finger press that over and then give it a press with a hot iron. Okay, so with half square triangles, you have a little bit of extra fabric here. You've got your rectangle, that's the background rectangle. You've got this little flap of fabric, a fabric C, and then the top fabric, and that's definitely necessary for the block. The only one that we don't want here is this one, and I'm just gonna trim this back to be about a quarter of an inch away from that stitching. It's just a little bit of extra fabric, don't really need it in the block. Now I am gonna leave our background fabric in place because if we leave it in place, then we know that the unit is always gonna be the correct size and shape. So I'll give it another press, and now we take another square and layer it on the opposite side. And again, lining it up so we have our line running from corner to the center and you stitch right on that line. So I'll take it the machine and show you how to do that next. So I've taken my time and lined up that square with the edge of my rectangle. I slip it underneath the foot, right up against the needle. So the very next stitch I take is right on that center marked line. Now you'll notice that I get started stitching from the middle and work my way to the corner. I do that simply because it seems like I end up with less of a mess. A lot of times if I am piecing and I hit that corner first with my needle, it all kind of shreds and falls apart and it really doesn't work well. So that's why I start from the middle and piece my way to the corner and it always seems to work out right. Again, I'm going to fold over that triangle Give it a good finger press, very gently, and press it with my iron. And again, I'm also going to trim away that extra triangle beneath and leave that background fabric. What's nice is if you have the background fabric in place, then your rectangle really never changes shape. It's always gonna be the correct size and it's always gonna piece perfectly into your block. So here are all of our units laid out on our block. We've got our log cabin right in the center. We've got flying geese all around and make sure that they are pointing this way so it's kind of like we're producing a sawtooth star. And then we have our half square triangles in the corners with the fabric B triangles facing out. And this is our layout. So the next step will be to piece the units together into rows, then piece those rows together, matching those seam lines and then attach your borders and your block will be complete. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish your cabin fever block. So that's it for our cabin fever block. If you'd like to piece this beautiful quilt block, click right here to find the pattern at leahday.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our videos on YouTube so you don't miss out on any cool quilting videos coming out every Monday. Until next time, let's go quilt. Don't forget to subscribe so you can make more blocks like these. Subscribe to the video so you can get stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like that.